All right, good morning. Good morning and welcome to Coffee and Questions. We've got Facebook over here and Insta. We've got going on over here. We're live on both. All right, cool. I've got my cycling kit on this morning um, because I am about to, well, trying to do another order for cycling kit. So if you haven't got a cycling kit and you want one, uh, please send me an email, uh, info at dietitianapproved.com.au. Um, I think we're chasing maybe two, two or three female orders and a couple of male orders as well before that goes in. Now these are top of the range Castelli um, gear. Like I'm super uh, particular with cycling kit. I don't like uncomfortable chamois. They've got to be really top quality because they hurt your bits otherwise. Uh, so this is actually yeah, top of the range Castelli custom. It's what team Ineos are actually riding in. So the current design's a little bit different to this. Um, it's got slightly longer sleeve, which is kind of what's in fashion at the moment. Um, and it's quite tight. It's like a race cut because they've done some testing in the wind tunnels and yeah, got the design super aerodynamic. So it is quite tight. If you like loose, comfortable kit, then maybe go two sizes bigger. Um, but if you're happy with what is the current fashion recycling kit, it's nice and tight, it's aerodynamic, then you'll love it. So yeah, if you want one, please let me know. I'm kind of not advertising it necessarily because I don't want to do apparel. This is the last time I'm ever ordering cycling kit. I'm never doing it again, <laughs> ever. So if you want cost price, Castelli, top of the range, it's, unless they change the prices on me again, it's 280 Australian for um, bib nicks and jersey. And that's cost price, um, plus whatever shipping is to get to you. Um, I think it's a $600 kit if you buy it off, off them, just off the shelf. So yeah, definitely a good deal if you want one. So hit me up, send me an email if you want a cycling kit. I've got some sample kits for sizing um, in the office. So if you're in Brisbane, I can get some too. Or you can also just go to a cycling shop and get the, try on the latest Castelli stuff and, and figure out what size you are as well. So Liv, you're on here. I just saw you join. If you want a DA cycling kit, <laughs> Last chance ever. I'm never doing it again. Um, hit me up. Good morning, Carly, and good morning, Beck, and good morning, Susie Burrell. What are you doing here? Um, and then uh, who else? Who else is that? Uh, uh, Lauren, Laura, Lauren's here too. And then Indiana Fuel. Good morning, everyone on Insta. All right, so that's one cool thing. And the other thing that's happening, I don't know if you can see behind me. Yeah. We're starting a podcast, baby. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, starting a podcast. I've done a, a few recordings of episodes, just trying to edit them up and get the whole sort of system and process of podcasting uh, up and running, but hoping to launch that this month. So keep your ears to the ground for when that's going to happen. And I can't set a firm um, date just yet because it there's a little bit of logistics in the back end to try and get that happening. Um, but I will let you know when it is coming. Uh, super cool. So it's very triathlon nutrition specific. So if you're a triathlete and you need help with your nutrition, whether you're a complete beginner um, and you've never had any nutrition advice before, you're kind of new to the sport, or you've been doing the sport for quite a while now and you've still not really kind of nailed your nutrition or you think you have, but there's probably a few little elements that you need help with, then it's definitely the podcast for you. So it's called the Triathlon Nutrition Academy in line with my program that's starting in September. Um, and I will let you know when it is coming. I'm super excited. Not so excited to hear my own voice back. <laughs> uh, it's definitely weird uh, you know, speaking into a little microphone and then having to listen to yourself back. But I guess that's what Coffee and Questions is too. I kind of am used to talking to myself um, on here, so it's not too different. All right, so they're the two most exciting things that are happening in my world. Um, yeah, cycling kit, let me know if you want one. And yeah, podcast coming soon, which I'm super stoked about. So there's no theme for today necessarily. Um Oh, hang on. I've lost all these people on Insta. Carly says, woohoo. Um, and then Carly Booth has joined and a bunch of other people. Good morning. All right. I've got, I'm up to date on Insta now. Um, 
Uh, there's no theme for Coffee and Questions today. I'm really just here to answer your questions live. So if you've got anything that you want to know, um, pop it in the chat box now and, and let me know. Don't wait till the end. I'm on a strict time limit today. I'm going to try and keep it to 20 to 30 minutes maximum because uh, we're going, <laughs> getting out of hand here. I want this to be a really short, sharp session, some good information, answer your questions for what you're struggling with, um, and then get on with our days. So I'm actually going to um, make love with this guy today. It's my favorite new toy. Um, so I have had one sort of comment or question come through from somebody in Insta. So if you're watching on Facebook, send me a, there's a couple of people here on Facebook watching. If you have anything you want to know about, um, type it in now. It can take a little while for that to come through on Facebook. And same as Insta, if you have any questions you want to know about, um, type it in the chat box now and I'll answer it after this one. So somebody has sent me a um, like comment or question on, on Instagram just saying that they're really struggling with tiredness. And I wanted to try and talk through that a little bit today. I guess it depends why, um, why she's tired, whether it's, you know, getting, not getting enough sleep <laughs> is a big one. Um, whether that's just from really heavy training load or work, um, whether it's stress from work or shift work, or, you know, sometimes it's hard to go to sleep if you're thinking about work stuff at night a lot. Um, and maybe some of the behaviors around sleep too, as you're heading towards bed, like are you the type of person, person that spends a lot of time on their phone in bed at night? We know that, oh, I was looking for my phone, but it's right here. <laughs> that's, a, that's a summary of my, my brain and my life at the moment. <laughs> I was actually late today because I realized I'd only put mascara on one eye um, and I had to <laughs> quickly go on to the other one. So that's a good summary of where my um, life is at currently. Um, yeah, so spending a lot of time on your phone right before you go to bed, um, it does emit a blue light, which affects our melatonin, which is our sleep hormone. So you can turn on a lot of the phones. So I've got an iPhone, but the other Android ones have it as well. Turn on what's called like night shift. And that shifts your phone screen to more of a yellow, warm, orangey hue after a certain time. So I think I've got mine set up to do that hue color at from sort of 6 p.m. ish, I think, when I'm starting to wind down for bed to make sure that my melatonin, my sleep hormone, um, is not being affected by the blue light emitted from my phone screen. And that goes on um, all overnight until maybe 6 a.m. it stays there as well so that I'm not sort of being woken up in the morning by a really bright blue light. Um, so a couple of like, I guess, sleep hygiene things might be good to look at if that's not happening for you if you're getting really tired for that for that reason one other factor to think about is whether your iron levels are okay or not um, sometimes we can get really tired and fatigued and run down if our iron stores are low and i think it's important to note that the iron cutoffs in a lab from your gp are different to what the athlete guidelines are so if you're an active person particularly being a female, if you're an endurance athlete, you're at high risk of having um, low iron because we've got high needs. You've got regular monthly iron losses. And then if you're an endurance athlete or somebody that runs um, or does quite high intensity training frequently, then one, we have heel strike hemolysis. So when you pound the pavement and you, you smash your heels onto the pavement, you actually burst open your red blood cells. Um, and that can be iron loss every time you run. Um, or if you're doing more high intensity or sustained endurance type training, you do actually bleed through your gut too. So there's iron losses that way. So having a look at your iron levels, if you're feeling tired all the time and you kind of can't understand why, that may be a reason. Um, and the other big thing to think about if you're feeling tired all the time is, are you eating enough? So I guess... One indicator for me is if people are falling into a heap at the end of a, a training week, at say come Friday, then chances are you're probably not doing a good job of fueling and recovering and, and eating to your training load through the week if you're feeling like that come the end of the week. Like, yes, um, obviously, you know, life can be stressful and busy and come Friday, you're like, Phew, I'm ready for the weekend. But if you're just feeling really flat and fatigued and tired and run down by Friday, uh, and, you know, then maybe have big weekend training sessions and you might struggle to get through them. Just um, being more mindful around how you're eating to support training during the week could be a good way to fix that. 
And that's something I do with my clients is I look at their training load. I guess this is what a sports dietitian does in relation to food and training and nutrition compared to a regular dietitian that wouldn't necessarily do this is I look at your week's training load and I match food to that so that you eat differently on a lighter training day um, and then also eat differently on a big double session hard day and your weekend long session days look different as well. So you're not eating the same thing every day. And I think that's really important because that's commonly what I see clients do when they come into private practice is they have a, like I get them to fill out a food diary and exercise diary. And a lot of the time the food is exactly the same. Um, so that's obviously not going to meet your needs for your training load. If your training load varies, like you can totally eat the same thing day in, day out. If you're a bodybuilding, body sculpting, gym goer type person, cause your training is relatively similar. But chances are, if you're on my coffee and questions, then you're not that person. <laughs> you're probably more of an endurance um, athlete and therefore your training's not the same every day, particularly for triathlon. So we know that your training load definitely peaks and troughs through the week. Um, you'll have a lighter or a deload day generally somewhere. Um, and then your also load changes and evolves over the month or the training cycle, depending on what event you're into what your event you're locked into next as well. So just making sure that your food matches that. We shouldn't be eating the same thing all year, wanting to make sure that you are scaling when you need to and up and scaling down when you need to too. So they're kind of three things if, you, if you're really being affected by tiredness to have a look into and make sure that you're really ticking all those boxes. So getting enough sleep and whether there's a few sort of sleep hygiene habits you need to do there, getting your iron checked, and then also whether your actual energy availability is good and your food matches training load. All right, so we've had a couple of questions come through while I've been talking about that. So um, on Instagram, um, Isaaca says, if I'm having a calorie deficit but not losing weight, why could it be? Um, so depends if you're actually in calorie deficit or not and how you've calculated that, I guess is my first thought. Um, and if your calorie deficit is too low, then sometimes that can stunt weight loss too. So I don't see, well, I sometimes see this, but not so much anymore. Back in the day when I did a bit more gym goer type client work, people will come to me on say a 1200 calorie deficit, a calorie plan, which is yeah, huge deficit and they're not losing weight. And that's because that's way too low. It's probably below their rest of resting metabolic rate. And so the body is really good at then just, you know, maintaining or not dropping any fat because you're not giving it enough energy. So I would look at that as, as something if your calorie deficit is too low um, if it is actually a calorie deficit um, and um, I guess having a look at your training load to making sure that you know training matches food and you are in a calorie deficit seven days a week some people put themselves in a calorie deficit for five days and then the weekend's just a free-for-all and so therefore that's enough to kick you out of that calorie deficit and you can maintain your weight uh, ongoing if that's the case too. So a couple of things to look at, obviously, I don't know who you are and what you need or, or anything about you, but a couple of thoughts, I guess, if you're not mm, losing any weight, if you're just maintaining a couple of things to think about if you are actually in a calorie deficit or not, or if it's too low, if you are. All right. Beck said best foods when sick to boost recovery. Thanks. Daycare. <laughs> Um, so I guess, so cold or flu type recovery we're talking about, Beck. Um, I guess, you know, if you're sick, take it easy, right? Don't burn the candle at both ends. If you're working, looking after little ones and you're trying to do triathlon training, just take it easy. Um, it's okay to back off training. A lot of, um, triathletes really struggle with that. It's okay to not train for a few days. <laughs> Um, Beck said, yep, to cold and flu. Yeah, so maybe like deload your training, look after yourself. Um, and then in terms of food things, try and really boost up your antioxidants um, and all your color sort of foods. So lots of fresh fruit, lots of um, salad and vegetables to get a huge range of vitamins and minerals across your week. 
regular hits of protein is really important so that you can still um, maintain your muscle mass and you don't lose too much while you're resting. Um, make sure you've got no intensity to your training. Um, and the other thing you can do is take a sort of vitamin C and zinc combination um, supplement. So something like, I'm not sponsored by Swiss, but Swiss Immune, they do a C-Zinc combo that can be useful. Um, there's a little bit of evidence around taking that as a way to reduce the severity and duration of, of cold and flus if you hit that early. Um, make sure you're taking a probiotic um, and there's some good evidence around, maybe this for you actually, Beck. I know you're not good at taking things and we've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure. Um, but take one of the probiotics that's got the good strain in it that can help lower the incidence of upper respiratory tract infections if you've got little ones in daycare. Um, Swiss do one. And again, I'm not sponsored. It's just what we used for the Olympics, which is why it's in my head. Um, it's called uh, immune or something like that, immune booster or something, something along those lines, a probiotic. Um, I think Inner Health Plus do one as well. Um, and probably good for Roy Boy to take, take something like that if he's in daycare getting sick all the time. Um, there is a kid's one that's the same sort of thing, an immune boosting sort of probiotic. And what's in it is a particular strain of bacteria or probiotic um, that has been researched to lower the incidence and severity of upper respiratory tract infection. So there's a kid one that's a powder that can mix into like yogurt or something. And that would be a good thing for him to take every day. And while you're doing it for him, do it for you as well, because you're the bus driver, remember? You've got to look after yourself to keep him functional. Um, but as mums, we tend to look after everyone else first. And Jo just joined. Jo and I have talked about her being the bus driver a lot. <laughs> Um, you're the bus driver. If you go down, the whole ship goes down. So making sure that you are looking after yourself too. Beck said, on the couch resting, which is killing me. <laughs> yep, most triathletes don't know how to stop. Uh, so it's important that you do stop and rest. And the, the better you are at that now, the faster you'll get back to training. But if you try and push through that, then I've had people end up in hospital with pneumonia because they've tried to push through things because they don't know how to stop. So just be careful. Like obviously it's, if it's on your chest, I'm not a doctor, but if it's on your chest, you shouldn't be exercising in intensity. Like if it's just in your head, you can get away with it a bit more. Um, but yeah, just, just rest, get it done and dusted quickly. And then you'll be back to doing what you love. All right. I think I've got those questions on Insta sorted. Now on Facebook, we've got Tina who wants to know, um, Best foods to cut out for inflammation and sore joints, please. Old retired athlete problems. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a there's a little bit in the like media, I guess, on the internet around cutting out animal products for inflammation. Um, not a lot of evidence for that necessarily, but if you're a big meat eater, um, then just looking at your overall load of that can be something that can be of benefit. I had an athlete come in the other day who's trying to go vegetarian because he feels it um, makes him feel better. And I asked him if it's the lack of red meat that he's been cutting out or trying to cut out, or if it's just that he's eating better when he does that. When he starts to think about the food choices that he's making, he actually eats better. And so it's not necessarily that the meat is the problem, the red meat. Um, but that he increases his intake of like salads and vegetables and he cuts out crap food when he does that. And then duh, he feels better. So um, there's, yeah, I guess there's two schools of thoughts in terms of meat intake and inflammation. And it's an individualized thing, depending if that's what you want to do or not. And then if you do do that, then making sure you're getting good quality protein sources from other places. Um, you could do some, like put some anti-inflammatory foods in, so making sure you've got things like olive oil and avocado, plenty of nuts and seeds and things like fatty fish, Tina. So salmon, tuna, herring, mackerel, those sorts of things are good to include. And if you're like Beck, who doesn't eat fish, um, then taking a fish oil supplement can be beneficial as well. And you can actually even just kind of boost intake of those anti-inflammatory fats by taking a fish oil supplement, even if you do eat fish, just to make sure you're getting enough. All right, Tracy has asked, how do you avoid cramping in leg muscles on long bike rides four to six hours? <laughs> Good question. 
Um, cramping is a big, big, um, a big topic, Tina, but I'll quickly try and summarize a few points for you. Um, so cramping, a lot of people blame electrolyte imbalance or salt for it. Um, and really at the end of the day, it probably comes down to dehydration um, and fatigue would be two of the main things that cause cramping. So if you constantly cramp in just one muscle, say legs, like if you're cramping in your quads, then chances are you're probably more fatigued in the quad. If it was a whole electrolyte imbalance, then you're more likely to cramp whole body, okay? Because it doesn't make sense for you to just cramp in one muscle if it's a total body electrolyte imbalance, right? So, um, yeah, I would, if it's just like quads or calves or something on the bike, a lot of people cramp in their calves in the swim, um, because it's in a, when you're kicking your legs, your calves in a contracted state and it's held there and then you push off the wall and it quickly shortens. So cramping is quite common in the pool. And that's probably because your calves are tight. They're fatigued from your run that you did the, that morning or yesterday um, and you need to do some more stretching. So a couple of things to avoid cramping is make sure that you're not um, tight make sure you do some strength training through your legs. A lot of triathletes are not good at doing strength um, and it's definitely an important discipline for a sport where you're doing three different sports. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to run, cycle and swim. You need to put some strength in there as well. Um, and I can't remember what the first one I said was, but hydration, strength um, and stretching and you know, making sure, I guess, your positioning on the bike is okay as well. So you might need a slight shift in where your saddle is to get more sort of posterior chain glute involvement um, if you're finding that your quads are doing a lot of the work um, or, yeah, it could just be a totally positional thing. But, yeah, four to six hours is a long time. If you're not used to sitting in the saddle doing rides of that length, then obviously doing more of that sort of stuff is going to increase your strength so that you don't cramp so much. But you're in a, a, a weird sort of position um, for a long period of time too. So, yeah, it's probably just positioning, could be hydration. It's unlikely to be fixed by eating more salt. Um, and there's also no evidence for magnesium in cramping, but you could do that too because everyone seems to. <laughs> um, so th there's a couple of pointers for you, Tracy. Hopefully that helps. All right, is there any other questions? Any other questions for me? Good morning, Alex. And Jagan has joined us. And Carrie Farley. All right, so if you've just joined me too, um, if you've just joined me and we're talking about bikes, if you're watching the replay, you'll have heard this. But if you want a dietitian approved cycling kit, please let me know because I'm putting in one more order and then that's it, I'm done. So I've, that's why I've got it on today. I haven't been for a ride, it's a bit drizzly. I wish I'd been for a ride. Um, but send me an email if you would like one. It is cost price Castelli, so it's 280 for a whole kit which is normally a $600 kit and it's top of the range, like really good chamois, it's not going to hurt your bits, <laughs> um, which is really important if you're riding for four to six hours, Tracy. <laughs> um, so hit me up if you need one. Um, Joe said stand up and U-turns out of saddle. Yeah, stand up, stretch your legs is a good tip um, from an ex-Ironman athlete. <laughs> um, Alex said, love my kit so much. You are welcome, Alex. Um, do you want another one, Alex? <laughs> so I'm just chasing a couple more orders, a couple of female, a couple of males, and then the orders going in. Got to meet minimum orders to, to get it. Um, and then it takes a couple of months to arrive as well because it comes from Italy and there's been a whole heap of delays with COVID, but it should be, it should be okay now because Italy's kind of opened up. Oh no, my work phone is ringing. Oh, hopefully nobody can hear that. <laughs> All right, is there any other questions? And if there's not, then we might um, try and wrap up, but hopefully Tina, that gave you some hot tips. Tracy, that gave you some hot tips as well. And um, the person who asked about calorie deficit too, and Beck. So a couple of good questions today. And then that question about being tired, a couple of things to consider if you are tired. So yeah, if there's no other questions, 
it's 9 30 already i might jump off and i will see you next week so let me know if you have any questions in between now and then i'll always pop a little question um, box in the instagram story 24 hours before so you can pop them in there as well just helps to keep a bit of structure and um, less ramble to these things but tina said thank you you're welcome and tracy said thank you too over on facebook over here um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be any other questions. So I will sign out and I'll see you all next week. Yo!